Hello, I'm Jeff. My wife and I host Message of Hope. Message of Hope wants to be your weekly inspirational, motivational, and non judgmental friend to help you through your week as we share Bible truth and life experiences to let you know you're not alone. Let's join Sandra to see what Message of Hope she has today. Hey guys, I'm Sandra. And today I just wanted to share a personal reflection with you that began with me stumbling upon an old Facebook post that I had posted back in August of 2013. It was on all the good things God already planned for us, but for some reason, we just aren't seeing them materialize in our lives. And we get disappointed. We let that type of negative thinking go on in our heads, and before we know it, We find our actions are following that negative thinking, and we end up digging ourselves into an even deeper mess, leading to even more discouragement, more frustration, and never finding our treasures in life because we're buried under bad thinking and bad choices. And the end results of this I'll call our garbage. We do this, don't we? We all have different things we hope to do or achieve in our life. That's our treasure. It's what we live for. It's the thing that drives us. And today, I ask you to humor me and take the time listening to this as some much-needed quiet time with God. Close your eyes and listen if you can as we look for our treasures today. We will suit up to pick up trash left along our highway of life. Imagine, if you will, we have our yellow-colored caution vest on, our gloves, protective gear for our eyes, a hard hat for those limbs that just might fall, and an empty garbage bag in our hand, as well as a few tucked into our pocket, to dispose of the garbage we find. I hope you can stick around to the end and discover how to clean up your highway and ultimately find your treasures. We want our life, our view, to be beautiful, but this garbage keeps getting put in our path. And we have a choice to either clean it up or walk over it, ignoring it and leaving a trail and a stench behind us. Sometimes I find myself looking at what I see in front of me, a big mess, a whole pile of trash. I see opportunities I've let go by me out of fear. I see words gone unspoken that may have helped somebody, but I was afraid of what they'd think of me. I've made mistakes as a parent. I've ignored and otherwise not supported my husband at times. I've spent countless hours watching TV or playing on Facebook, when there were many more important and at times even more pressing things and people to invest my time in, but I chose not to. That kind of stuff is our garbage, and it bogs us down. So, let's imagine we're all geared up, and we need directions for completing our task. Well, the Bible tells us in Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. It's when we take the time to just be still and listen, we find the directions. Our lives are full of work, kids, dinner, baths, social media, photos, games, bills, sickness, drama. We feel we don't have any time, don't we? But God can steer us better than anyone. He has the answers to get us on the right track to achieve all he designed you and me to do and to be. So our first priority needs to be spend time with him so he can tell us. If we're too busy to listen, then we won't ever hear from him. He gave us free will. It's up to us whether we talk to him to find out what we need to know. He won't make us. It's our choice. If we be still and know that he is God and trust him, 
He will begin to uncover the layers of garbage and confusion that the enemy has been covering up the truth with. And he will reveal to us that the treasure we have been longing to find has been waiting for us underneath the trash all along. That reminds me of the old hymn. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So our daily goal should be, be still, trust, and obey. If you're like me and give this some thought, I bet you come to a similar conclusion. You see, it's hard to trust someone you don't know. It's hard to feel assured things will all work out when we know we haven't put feet to our faith, isn't it? It's when we actually do what he tells us is best that we will have the most success in every area of our lives. That means we have to put in the effort to build our friendship with him just like we would anyone else we found interesting and wanted to hang with. Just like you would spend extra time sucking up to that supervisor at work when you knew an opening was coming up which would mean an advancement in your career. When it's important enough for us to do it, we do it, don't we? And as we be still before God, like any great leader, along with the direction, he gives us encouragement. God says, don't look at what you see in front of you, because that will get us overwhelmed as we look at the obstacles, the garbage. No, he says, Look at what I am doing. Also in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, he said, So don't remember what happened in earlier times. Don't think about what happened a long time ago, because I am doing something new. Now you will grow like a new plant. Surely you know this is true. So this is our time for a new beginning. To get things out of the way, so we can see what he is already doing all around us, for us, or through us. Jeremiah 10.23 says, Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. And what that's saying is, we weren't created to walk alone in life, in our own logic, intelligence, or our own reasoning. Because relying on ourselves alone will only get us into trouble. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 says, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So it's saying we can't just aimlessly walk around in this dark world. We can't have the life we want just filling our time with busyness. We have to pay attention to and stay focused on what we're doing and what we're being subjected to as we go through our day. And remember, just because something might look okay and feel right doesn't necessarily mean it's good for us. It just might be the snake hiding under that old tire or that trash that we're about to pick up along the road we're cleaning up. When we walk with purpose as instructed, we will avoid a lot of dangerous spiritual, physical, or mental pitfalls. Our goals cannot be reached without purposefully working toward them. God's will is the roadmap to our success. You might want to say, God is our Google Maps to navigate our road and our life successfully. Okay, for one, we've been intentional to work on acknowledging and working on our habits, our fears, and the things that tempt us to sin. Two, we were still with God and allowed him to feed our spirit and encourage and direct us to help us get a plan of action for our day. Three, now we put faith into action as we begin to walk with him along our highway 
to collect treasures and dispose of anything that is a hindrance to our success, our garbage. So we fill bag after bag of trash as we walk, put there either by ourselves or others who have come across our path. As he leads us and reveals what's trash and needs to be thrown out of our lives, what's treasure and should be kept, and we fill our pockets to bulging with treasures that we had lost before, but we find beneath the garbage as we moved it out of the way, too. The treasures we found today make a way back into our lives for our enjoyment, and the garbage was all thrown into God's dumpster to be disposed of and forgotten forever as we made the choice to throw it away. We are tired, but as today's sun is about to set and our cleanup for today is nearing an end, we look behind us at the miles of road we've walked and we see so much success. The view is so much prettier and the exposed, lush green grass is now moving in the breeze, free from the trash that had overshadowed it and was smashing it down. We realize we're hot, sweaty, a bit sunburned, and we were bitten by a few bugs along the way. But through it all, our load feels so much lighter. Our heart is so much happier. We have a sense of purpose, of accomplishment, of knowing today, this day, we did the best we could to right our wrongs and to look at ourselves honestly, to humble ourselves before our Creator and simply took the time to be still with Him and get the directions and the plan for our day. And when we walked out our door to begin it, we let Him walk with us throughout it. Now we can go home, wash up, slate clean, and lay down and have indescribable peace because we know He faithfully walked with us through our day. So there's assurance He will be with us as we find a peaceful night's rest. I think we did good setting ourselves some goals today, and now we know how to approach each new day God provides us with from now on. As I sign off, my prayer is we all begin each day with being still, walk each day with God directing us, and spend each night in blissful rest at the feet of our Father the only one who will never leave us, never forsake us, loves us unconditionally regardless, and wants the best for us in this life as well as died for us so we could be with him in the next one. May each of our days begin with being still, getting direction and encouragement, suiting up to dispose of the trash, to reveal the beauty, and to reclaim what's previously been lost. Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until next week, Shalom.